This is WNCT 9 on your side, weekend edition. Well, folks, needless to say, Hurricane Matthew is a weather story we're going to be talking about for a long time here in eastern North Carolina. We've been saying it over the past several days to watch out for near record levels of flooding, and unfortunately, that's what's transpiring across the area tonight. Let's get started. We've got a lot to talk about here. And Candace, we're going to take folks on kind of a tour. Meteorologist Candace Bowling here with me. And Candace, this flooding video out of Goldsboro is just absolutely amazing. It, it really is. If you kind of watch the left portion of your screen right here, and that's an intersection, and it's it's completely underwater. There's cars there in that intersection as well. You can see submerged, abandoned, uh, something that you don't typically see for this portion of Goldsboro. Uh, absolutely right. For point of reference, the Target store over in Goldsboro, if you're familiar with that is, is just out of view on this particular uh, image. This is the overpass heading there. And again, you see that car underwater there, another car behind it. Uh, we get hurricanes, but it's not often that we see quite that level of flooding uh, with hurricanes moving through images impressive over towards the Tarboro area too, even right here uh, in Greenville I here. Notice that those are the inland counties too. Oh, absolutely, Candace. You're right. This uh, system, Matthew, is not a strong system at the moment. Max sustained winds only about 75 miles an hour, but it's been unwrapping. We've been talking about that unwrapping effect for the rainfall, and it also spreads the wind field out a little bit. Now, the center of circulation is not up here. It's actually tracking off this way. It's kind of a little misleading when you look at the uh, satellite representation, but Matthew barely hanging on as a hurricane. There's not much to it structurally at this moment, but you don't need a strong hurricane if you're dumping this amount of water. And the problem we see with Matthew over the next couple of days is a cumulative effect. It comes partially from all the heavy rain we had back in September. We were just not in a good position to take a rainfall of this magnitude that we have seen. And that's why the flooding problems are going to be rather severe over the next several days. We've had some increasing wind gusts at times during the day, gusting close to 70 miles an hour earlier today around Goldsboro over in Wayne County. And I don't want you to drop your guard along the coast because even though the outermost rain shield will gradually work offshore as we head into Sunday, very strong winds in, uh, exist on the backside of this system. So coastal flooding and surge issues are very likely around Albemarle, Pamlico Sound as we head into Sunday. Also the outer banks, we could still see some wind gusts around hurricane force. So we're not done with Matthew yet out along the coast. Now coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk about the river levels, which will continue to rise over the next few days. Of course, the longest running newscast in the east starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kelly Byrne and I'm Patrick Coyne. Hurricane Matthew, as you just heard, is still strong and continuing to move north after battering the Florida, Georgia and South Carolina coastlines. The powerful storm has already claimed the lives of three people here in North Carolina. We have team coverage tonight as WNCT crews are working around the clock to bring you the very latest with Hurricane Matthew. First, let's head over to Alley Weatherton, who has more from Atlantic Beach. In the past half hour, some of the conditions have changed. It's starting to sprinkle a little bit, but the wind hasn't picked up. One thing I want you to see is the foam that's coming out of the ocean, and you can see if you can see the waves are just crashing down onto the sand. Now I want to show you some daytime video so you can see some flooding. This was taken in Morpeth City. You can see parts of Shepherd Road were blocked off. Now for some damage. I personally have not seen much damage here in Moorhead City besides this sign for Tony Surf Shop. Many people here in Atlantic Beach I've talked to are either residents here for a wedding or just want to see what a hurricane looks like. Coming out looking at some of the damage, looking at the ocean, it's really in an odd way very pretty. Um, just drive around because when the power goes out and there's no football, it's just going to be me. So I thought I'd get out and ride around for a little while. Here in Carteret County, 82 people are in the shelter and there's over a thousand power outages. Now, last night I told you about a wedding that was supposed to be happening today at 11 a.m. on the beach. That was rescheduled and it was inside and they said that it went off without a hitch. In Atlantic Beach, Allie Weatherton, nine on your side. Thanks, Allie. And this hurricane is taking a toll on many of the coastal areas. We're going to hand it over to Zora Stevenson in New Bern with the latest from there. Zora. Yeah, it seems like every time I do one of these updates, I'm saying something different, but that's because that's how much the conditions are changing right now. Lots of wind. I was saying a couple minutes ago, it sounds like Matthew is trying to say something to us. He's howling behind me as the wind keeps coming in and out, in and out. And earlier today, it was the rain, so we're in and out. And what's scary is there was already some flooding going on before a lot of this wind picked up. We're going to show you some video of the scenes, what it looks like of some of the low 
low-lying areas in New Bern. First, Union Point Park underwater. It was closed for most of the day. Then a couple blocks away on Front Street, parts of the road are washed away. It's hard to tell where the street starts and the river stops. Lots of scary stuff. Earlier, a lot of people were out and about, and while it was all smiles during the day, people know this is only the beginning. You can see the water is already coming up to the front of the road. So considering that um, a lot of the rain hasn't really hit us yet, it is a little concerning with how much flood we've had so quickly. It's kind of wet here. The river's coming up pretty good. Nervous at all? Nah, I don't live down here, so <laughs> I don't have to worry. My house is up high. There are a number of swift water rescue crews in town. They've responded to two calls already. Both people were stranded in cars and made it out safely. Some National Guard members are also in town. We've also seen some damages from this storm. Two power lines went down earlier today, but the good news is that power has been restored for everybody here in New Bern. A tree fell onto two houses on National Avenue, but the story right now is wind. And as Jerry keeps talking about, it may not be raining, but that wind isn't good for flooding either. Flooding has already started and we just hope it doesn't get worse. Live in New Bern, Zora Stevenson, nine on your side. Thanks, Zora. And less than, less than an hour ago, WTT spoke with Lenore County Director of Emergency Services, Roger Dale, on conditions there. We've got a lot of damage. Um, you know, obviously we have flooded roads, flooded homes, flooded cars. We got some structural damage. Um, just a lot of stuff. And in Pitt County, a nine o'clock curfew went into effect. Angela Green is live outside our studio in Greenville with a look at the conditions. Thumbs up if y'all can hear. Do test one, two, three, four, test, test one, two, one, two. One, two. Uh, hope everybody's all right. I was trying to get to work about 730 when I got called in and pulled out of my neighborhood, turned left, two cars were flooded out, people couldn't get by. I'm like, all right, I'll go the other way. I got about half a mile on the road. That part of the road was flooded out, so I was pretty much stranded. And uh, decided to break out my cell phone, get some video and some pictures to send back to the station. Uh, GPD officer came up in an unmarked car, you know, asked if I was in one of the cars that was stranded, and kind of told him my story. He was like, "Well, I, I can give you a ride to, to, to the station," and I was like, "That that would be great." So, and was rescued by they, GPD folks. <laughs> I wasn't rescued necessarily. Well, you, they helped you out. They, so they rescued a lot of people tonight. To I'm sure. Exactly. I, I necessarily was not rescued. Exactly. But they did help me out. Um, I was kind of explaining now that we have Ken here and I can kind of drive the camera. Ken, walk over here okay. to all that flooding um, and kind of explain to people. We have a whole crew out here, y'all, just for this Facebook Live video. But I tried to get Ken to go walk out in this water earlier today to see how bad it was. And there are deer. Oh, you can't see in the... Oh, it's a lot of deer. You can't see them. But they're running out there, too. Yeah. Are they out there? Yeah. yeah. So I wish you guys could see. That reflector right there is... That's a fire hydrant, but in between there and here is um, a ditch, so it's really bad. But we'll be here to update you throughout the night. We're going to try to do, I know a lot of you guys are without power. Can you show them where the grass comes from? Yeah, that's the grass. We were talking. Thank you, Ken and Angela, and that's just a good reminder that if you are shooting videos or taking pictures, we love to have them, but also be careful because the conditions, like you said, uh, they are still dangerous. The inland areas are being hit hard in Greenville. Water began filling the streets early in the day. This is what the town's commons boat access looked like around noon. Now, this area is known for flooding during heavy rains. Here's some footage of road conditions early on Greenville Boulevard. Many streets are blocked off right now because of flooding. Some residents were out today getting a closer look. So obviously there's the concern between a lot of rain, a lot of wind, low visibility when driving. If you, if you don't have to drive, don't drive anywhere because, you know, water vehicles, they do not, they do not mix very well. Greenville city leaders addressed the public this afternoon with updates on concerned areas for flash flooding. Mayor Alan Thomas and Fire and Rescue Chief Eric Griffin are urging residents to take precautions as Matthew comes towards and stays and leaves the Greenville area. With flooding already in many parts of Greenville, they urge residents to stay indoors and not go in floodwaters. Mayor Thomas airs caution to stay aware of your surroundings. If you see down trees uh, along a street or an area, whether you're walking or by vehicle, first of all, we'd urge you not to do any of that over the next 12 hours. But if you see that, assume there is a down power line. If you can't see it, assume there's an issue. For information on areas of concern for flash flooding, head to WTT.com. 
And I recently spoke with Governor Pat McCrory on the phone. He cautioned all North Carolinians to stay off the roads. This is an extremely dangerous situation. We've already lost three lives. We have several people that may be missing. And sadly, for the eastern part of the state, this is going to be a prolonged situation. As Matthew continues to batter our coast, you can stay up to date on the conditions across our area, both right here on air and online at WNCT.com. Don't forget, you can also track your forecast on our free mobile app. The First Alert Weather app is free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And Governor Pat McCrory encourages you to download the free Ready NC app to find the latest traffic and hazard information in your area.